Okay, what's the treatment of families when we are? What's the management? Here we have to uh, here we have to it is secure caused by the post again. So you want to suppress the post again. So we our first choice is to use post again in synthesis inhibitor. And that uh, that effective in approximately 80% of cases. Most of them mostly we use ceramic acid, scooping to 500 milligram in eight hours, or maybe we can also use ceramic acid, 100 to 200 milligram in eight hours. Other we, we can also uh, use the protonic acid derivative that can reduce pain, like ibuprofen, 400 milligram in eight hours, or naproxen. 250 milligrams or 6 hours. For second term, we can also use oral and contraceptive pills. We can also use to treat the primary dysmenorrhea. Okay, this is the primary dysmenorrhea. Let's talk about the secondary dysmenorrhea. First, the definition. In secondary dysmenorrhea, pain to menstruation occurring in the presence of pelvic pathology. As we learned before in primary dysmenorrhea, the pain to menstruation also occurs, but there is the pelvic exam is normal. But in the secondary dysmenorrhea, the pelvic exam is not normal. It, it's again pain to the menstruation, but instead of being the onset at within two to five years in the this is a typical after the age of 20 or 30. There is a typical abnormal pelvic finding and pain is a typical dull and aching in nature rather than the cramping that is a, a dull and tiny dysmen over here. So here is a no GI symptom. There is a vomiting diarrhea, GI symptom. Secondary dysmen over here usually occurs many years after the onset of minority. Pain often begin three five days period, period and lead with an onset of fear, but sometimes may persist continuously up to a few days after the cessation of bleeding. So we can reduce pain by giving non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs, or we can also use the other factors or contraceptive pills. So what? are the main causes that can create a secondary dysmenorrhea that can cause pain. First is the endometriosis. This is a main cause of secondary dysmenorrhea. What does it mean? And the endometrial gland and stroma if located outside of the uterus, we call it the endometriosis. If, if there is a wall of the uterus, then we call it the adenomyosis. Second one is the febrile uterus. Then chronic pelvic infection also can cause it. cervical stenosis and the major problems. Diagnosis of the secondary basement we We can do by an abdominal or vaginal examination, fairly underlying region. But here we can also investigate like ultrasonography of the abdomen by laparoscopy or hysteroscopy we can have Analysis in the treatment, we can give analysis for the for the leaf brain, but the treatment of underlying causes is according, according to the cause. In secondary dysmenorrhea, the treatment we do according to the cause. The main cause here is the endometriosis. So let's talk about that and what is endometriosis here. What is the definition? First, look at the definition. And if the endometrial gland, uh, yes, that's, that's, it's a gland. Endometrial glands and stroma located outside of the uterus, we call endometriosis. If we use the wall of the uterus, that we call the adenomyosis. So this this show big mobility. 5.5 million in North America due to endometriosis. 75% of chronic pelvic pain produced by endometriosis, 85% hospital admission of endometriosis, and 40% of infertile women to endometriosis. Big mobility. Let's review a case that can help you to understand the endometriosis very well.
to the air A 34 year old woman complained about this malaria. Sorry. This malaria, this malaria had infant guilty for two years. Look at the age. It is not 19, it is not 18, it is a bit of the 30. What are the com complaints here? Dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea means uh, pain uh, during intercourse and infertility for two years. This is not happened in the case of the primary dysmenorrhea. She has the use combination of other factors, other factors, factor fields from age 25 to 30. The, here the main thing is the pelvic exam, as I also do the pelvic is the pelvic exam. Reveals Pelvic examination reveals a 5 cm polar tract mass along with the usual sacral ligament nodularity. This is the main thing. When you when you found this thing, you must think about the endometriosis. Utero sacral ligament nodularity, secondary dysmenorrhea, endometriosis. So what is the pathology? that uh, of uh, gland stoma getting outside of the wall of the uterus. First we suggest a retrograde menstruation. In the case of retromenstruation, when the inside the menstrual flow coming down after the cervix, after the regina and flow out to the body, it goes backward, retrograde, through the plethrin tube and spills out to the pelvis. And what are the right we get at the end of the fallopian uh, tubes? The ovaries. Here. The first main site of endometriosis is the ovaries. Here, when the retrograde menstruation keeps falling down, it's going to also involve the pole sac. The second most important common site of the endometriosis in pole sac. The, the retrograde menstruation can cause scarring of neutrocycle ligament that can cause neutrocycle ligament nodularity. This is a laparoscopic picture of polar sac during menstruation. You can see clearly the blood in the polar sac. But important thing uh, here, some of the patients who have uh, the retrograde menstruation don't develop endometriosis. So four main common sites of endometriosis. Right. As you can see in the diagram, first is the ovary, then the polar sac, then you have the usual type of ligament of food, and the retro sequence. So just see here. The four main common sites of endometriosis occur normally. You can uh, the uh, endometriosis in the ovary. You can see clearly the scar here. Here, this is endometriosis in the ovary. 